Hello everybody, this is Darth Lord 1997 coming to you guys with my second book review and my first comic review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the first three chapters of the webcomic, Suhira, City of Water. Suhira is a fantasy webcomic written and illustrated by Rihanna Dorsey, who also does work on the hashtag comic series, Cloud Riders. We're looking at the first three chapters of this story because Suhira is still currently being updated, and I would like to talk about the beginning of the story in one review. And, if you guys want me to, I'll review three chapters at a time once they're complete in separate videos. So I guess we'll start with the plot. Please note, I'll be skimming over a lot of details to avoid giving away spoilers. It's the year 2438. All of the Earth's oceans are now gone. This is the result of a battle between the goddess of water, Akia, and the god of fire, Ignis. Many of the residents in this world now believe that Akia has abandoned humanity. However, thanks to King Zahi I, who they believe convinced Akia with the help of Ignis, to leave them behind one last blessing of water. Because of this, despite the disappearance of the ocean, water is still available to anyone with the right size wallet. However, legend tells of a land, high in the Everpeaks, where one lake remains. And above this lake is the city of Suhira, where Akia and her followers live, where they have all the water they could ask for and live in peace. However, the city is dismissed as a fairy tale by a majority of the world. Princess Wahida of Iona isn't convinced. This is where the story begins. A young Wahida and her older sister Hadima are reading a book describing this city. Wahida is amazed at the idea of this city and she and her sister pray to Akia together for her to show them the way to the city. However, as time goes on, the royal responsibilities of being princesses starts to pull them farther and farther apart. Hadima's beliefs in Suhira dwindle, but Wahida's continue to grow. Then, when Hadima is married to Prince Utimio to become the new ruler of their home city, Iona, it's here where Hadima reveals to Wahida she regrets encouraging Wahida to pursue this futile quest. Wahida, now feeling betrayed, runs off and continues to pray to Akia. Throughout Chapter 2, Wahida's beliefs in Akia continue to make Wahida feel more and more detached from her family. And after an event I dare not spoil, she decides to run away. Okay, yeah, it does go that route, but I'll describe that more in a bit and finds Suhira for herself, where she believes she'll find peace and happiness. However, Chapter 3 shows the desert isn't really the most welcoming place for a princess, and the journey may prove more difficult than she thought. So yeah, that's the plot of the first three chapters basically. It's not as cliche as you might think it sounds. Yeah, it doesn't really offer any new ideas. However, it does use those ideas in new ways that hasn't really been used that often. Now, I will say chapter 1 and 2 do have a bit of a slow pace. However, after that huge event in the middle of chapter 2, I was hooked. The story really reminds me of the Disney films I grew up with, like The Lion King and Aladdin. And that's why I sort of feel like a kid watching VHS tapes in the early 2000s again when reading this comic. I know, if I had this complete story as a movie back then, this would be the kind of story worth rewinding after every viewing. However, that doesn't mean this story is entirely kid-friendly. There is a reason it's rated PG-13. I'm also a fan on how Rihanna understands that the best stories aren't limited to what's being told to you right now. There is a larger world within this story, and there are a ton of small details throughout the story that make hints that grow this fictional world. Also, I must talk about the art of this comic. If it wasn't obvious at this point by what I've shown you, the artwork is incredible. Rihanna just has this unique style in her art. That while it doesn't 100% match Disney's old style, it really takes me back to it. I would probably wouldn't have been so easily sold on this comic so early in the story if it wasn't for this art. The use of colors, lighting, and effects, Rihanna clearly knows how to use them. 
Nothing here seems sharp, except what needs to be, giving the environment a nice, welcoming feel despite being a desert. If I had to be critical, I will admit some lighting in Chapter 2 is a little eh to me. Rihanna's art is definitely masterwork. If you want to see more, you can check out her DeviantArt in the link below. A little bit of trivia for you guys, her art is so good, One Piece accidentally made it into a Sonic the Hedgehog game. More about that in the description. I really have to congratulate her on capturing both story and art here, which isn't as common as you might think. For example, I think the animation of Disney's Dinosaur is amazing. However, the story isn't really there for me. Some comic books I've read are the other way around. They have great stories to tell, but the art is just a miss. For example, the Ultimate Six storyline in Ultimate Spider-Man. Great plot, but the art, really decided to say this, just makes it harder to get into the story. However, art and story aside, I believe the best thing about this comic is the interaction. Zuhira's website does have a comment section where you can post your thoughts on the page, talk with other readers, or just have some fun. Rihanna is very interactive with her audience, and she's a very friendly person. She answers questions about the story one may have, unless in the answer spoils something coming up in the plot, reacts to some fun jokes other people comment, and even makes some of her own. The comment section is a very friendly and welcoming place, and it makes being part of this story's journey all the more fun. So overall, I really like this comic, and I think you guys should check it out. Especially if you grew up with the classic Disney and DreamWorks movies back in the early 2000s. The comic is currently as of this review in Chapter 5, and it updates every Wednesday. Or, if you want to use a more traditional website, every Sunday on DeviantArt. Except for when she puts it on hiatus. And don't worry, that rarely happens, and only when it needs to go on hiatus. I'll put a link to page 1 in the description below, so you can check it out if you want to give it a chance. I highly recommend it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys next time.